Cool new feature in Google Sheets allows you to do this group by view. So you can choose to do it by country, but you can also do it by absolutely anything. And you get the subtotals appearing at the top, which is a new enhancement. This uses a feature called Tables, which has been in Google Sheets for about a year now. Fantastic feature. I'm going to show you this in today's video. My name is David Benham, and I love doing videos about spreadsheets and other tech that use of the workplace, especially the new stuff. So let's get started and have a look at this. If you want a copy of this Google Sheets spreadsheet, then there is a link for how to get that in the description below. So here we have some raw data and in the data tab, you have create a group by view and you can choose essentially any one of these. It always makes sense to do the categorical columns and not the numerical ones. So let's say I want to do by item, it actually sorts it for you. So you have to sort it first yourself, which is kind of convenient. And what it's first done is created a table and I'll talk about that in a second, but then it's also done a group by. So let's expand these columns. So we can see the column name and for each one, you can actually pick a subtotal. So I can pick that I want a sum of this. It will do it equally for all of them. And I can choose for cost. You can choose any one of these. So some count average, min, max, how many empty, filled, unique, and percent empty, filled, and unique as well. What is a little bit unideal is it doesn't tell you which subtotal it uses. It's not exactly clear to the user, but if you expand it a little bit, it will actually tell you there, which is useful. It just takes up a little bit more real estate. So that's pretty much it. Once you have this group by view, you can then go back to your regular view by clicking on this and choosing exit view. It will then ask you if you want to save it. So I can say, yeah, group by item or by item, press save, and then it will go back to the regular view. If you ever want to go back to it, you can click on here and you can choose by item or create new group by view. Let's do another one by country. And here we'll have a different kind of subtotal like filled number of filled items and maybe an average. I guess some is almost always the one you'll want, but it's good to have the other options as well. It does a count over here as well. If you want to select none, you can select none there but you have to select it in the first one. These are not actually rows, so it jumps from four to five. You can't actually type anything in here. You can edit your table as normal and everything will flow through as you might expect. And you can also change other factors about it. So over here, you can exit the view again and say by country, like that. A couple of things about tables whilst they're here. So tables have lots of benefits in Google Sheets. So you can say, for example, notes, a table auto expand to give you anything on either direction on the right or below. And it can auto expand with not just the formatting, but also formulas and also anything linked like pivot tables. I have another video though, where I talk more about those. Let's go back to group by views. So here you can choose one that you want, as I said, you have a couple more options over here. You can rename it, duplicate it, or delete the view. You can also rename it here if you want to. So say broken down by item, perfect. And you also have the ability to rename the table. So this could be just uh, source data, spaces are allowed, unlike Excel. And Excel doesn't have these group by views in the same way. You have subtotal feature in Excel, but it's very different. This is a lot more robust. So you do also have another feature called group, which is if you select from columns, you can go to view and choose group. This will actually group like this. So you can expand or collapse. I find I use this a lot more than using the hide or unhide feature because it's just a lot more clear that people can see it. You can even, if you want to give it labels, so say press plus for details, and then people will see the plus directly above and they can press plus like that. You can group columns and rows equally if you want to. So if I was to go to view and group, it would also do that to ungroup it. You've seen how to do it perfectly well as well. So yeah, if you group, then it doesn't include them in the counts and expand them as you need. So some other things that are kind of new to tables are the ability to go to table formatting and these couple of things. So show table grid lines, a couple of new viewing options are brand new to tables and show table footer. So this is currently grayed out, but we can put that in if there's no group by view. Condensed view means it shows it with the standard widths between the rows rather than the expanded widths. 
And so if I go to the normal view by clicking on here and exit view, now it will show it to me just with the same widths for the rows as regular. I can though go here and choose table formatting and show table footer and also advanced options. So with the table footer, you can type in your grand totals. So if I type in equals, it will suppose I want the sum, which usually you would want, but you could also do equals average and it will give you this one. You'll note that it references the name of the column instead of anything else. And this is a really, really useful feature of tables because it means that it automatically grows as need be. So if I add in a new row in the middle like that, it is going to grow automatically. You can do calculations using the name of a column like that separately as well. Super, super, super useful. So I'll give you a use case. Let's say that you have some numbers here and I'm going to paste values only. So let's say I want to add these together. So I can do equals sum of these numbers and it will just have the normal cell range, I6 to I11, 1950. If I add in a new number here, you're probably very aware that that will not get added to the total. And this causes a lot of issues because this is something that people do accidentally all the time. Well, if this was a table, uh, then you get a lot of benefits. So let's say that I give it a column name. So let's say sales, select it, and then I go to format and convert to table. And now if I was to do any cell equals a sum of this data, you'll notice it says table one of sales, close my brackets. And as I add a new number, that does get added into the subtotal without me needing to think about it. So it says table one, but of course I could rename it by typing in data and then it will show here. Same as the way we renamed it above. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to show you in this video with group by and subtotals. Again, to get to it, you can create group by view over there. So you also can go to the data tab and you can choose, you can choose view options and delete all views and tab, and that will get rid of them. And you also have a filter view. So a filter view is pretty different. This allows you to essentially see the data the way you are analyzing it while someone else who is editing the spreadsheet at the same time is able to do something completely different. So for example, I'm filtering for Jim, but someone else in the spreadsheet at the same time is seeing all of the data right now. Now, you can also save this a lot like you can the other one. In fact, if you try and X out of it, you try and remove the filter or exit view, it will tell you, do you want to save it? So I could say Jim data save, and I can go back here and go back to Jim data. You won't see the other ones I've created because I deleted them. Also in the data tab, you can change view and go to it this way as well. All right. Well, that's what I wanted to show you for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, then give this video a like and remember you can download and check the file yourself and edit the file yourself by going to the link in the description below. All right. Thanks for watching.